Let's talk about the inverse of quadratics first. When we graph a quadratic, we get what's called a parabola. Here we can see the vertex. Vertex point is at negative 1, negative 4. When we do the inverse of a quadratic, we run into the problem of it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. It, it will pass the vertical test and only hit once, but horizontally we hit twice. Because of that reason, we don't have a one-to-one -one function, and we usually restrict the domain to the right-hand side of the graph or of the function from the vertex to the right. Traditionally, we go to the right-hand side. So we restrict the domain so that the part we're taking the inverse of passes the vertical and horizontal tests. All right, let's go down here and start with how do we find the inverse when we're looking at this as an equation rather than at the graph. First thing you're going to do is restrict the domain to the, to the right, right-hand side, which will always be x is greater than or equal to the h value. The h value will be the first value in the vertex. Up here we had the vertex was at negative 1 comma negative 4. So if I was to restrict the domain on this, I'd say I only want the x values that are greater than or equal to negative 1. We switch the x and y. You get the square value or the power by itself. Then we take the square root, the positive square root. Since we're restricting it to the right hand side, we'll only have the positive. Then we get y by itself and rename the y to f inverse of x. Let's look at a couple of examples where we try this. Okay, looking at the equation, it's in vertex form. So I know the vertex will be at h comma k. Here's h, and there is nothing after the parentheses, so k would be 0 with the vertex at negative 2 comma 0, I'll restrict the domain, restricted domain to x values that are greater than or equal to negative 2. One way to look at it is you can just switch the sign on the number that comes after the x if it's in vertex form. And it'll always be greater than or equal to that number. <clears throat> okay, going through the steps. First, we're going to switch our x and our y. So x equals y plus 2 squared. We switch the x and the y. We get the quadratic portion, or the part that's under the square by itself. It is. Then we can take the square root of both sides. Square root cancels out the square. Now we get y by itself. And last of all, we change the y to f inverse of x. Try that one more time. The minus 2 is not inside the radical. It comes after. Let's try another one down here. Let's try this one. <clears throat> 
Okay, the restriction on the domain, the restricted domain will be x values that are greater than or equal to 7. Just looking at this value in the parentheses, change the sign. That'll give us the right-hand right, right side of our parabola. We switch our x and our y. We get the squared portion by itself. Then we can take the square root of both sides. Normally, when you take a square root, you have a positive and a negative. But because we restricted the domain, we only take the positive square root. Now we get y by itself. And last of all, we change the y to f inverse of x. Yep. All right, let's try one of these with, with a radical. A radical is the inverse of a power. Uh, so basically, a quadratic is a power. Okay, so with these, we don't need to restrict the domain. So do not restrict the domain on these. They're already going to be one-to-one. -one. They will pass the vertical and horizontal tests. So no restriction is needed. In fact, you only need restrictions when you do a power where the exponent is even. So if the exponent is an even number, then we have restrictions. If it's an odd number or, or if it's a radical, square root, or cube root, or fourth root, we don't need restrictions. Okay, so we're still going to switch the x and the y. We're going to get the radical by itself. We're going to raise both sides to the power of the index. The index is this number above the root. That will be the power. And then we'll get y by itself, or and then we'll switch the y to f inverse of x. Let's do a couple of examples. So no restriction on the domain is necessary. We switch the x and the y. We get the radical by itself, PEMDAS backwards. So I'm going to take care of adding and subtracting first. Then I'll take care of multiplying and dividing second. And then exponents third. So subtract the six both sides. So I've taken care of the add, subtract. Now we'll take care of the multiply, divide. Divide two both sides. Now we'll raise both sides to the power of three. And we'll get y by itself by adding 5 to both sides. 
And last of all, change your y to f inverse of x. And there's the inverse of our f of x function.